it, it was a, it was a time of a lot of change. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't just the end of the Vietnam War or the resignation of Nixon or the death of the psychedelic hippie era and the very political and sometimes even violent SDS era, both of which I participated in. No, most consequentially, the 1970s were when today's Republican Party was birthed or conceived, actually, would be a better word. Um, our nation at that point had been humming along for 30 or 40 years with a top income tax bracket of 91% of the morbidly rich and a, a top corporate income tax bracket of around 50%. Uh, business leaders ran their companies, which were growing faster than ever in the history of the United States. And they avoided participating generally in politics. You didn't hear from business leaders back then. Democrat Franklin Roosevelt and Republican Dwight Eisenhower renewed America uh, in the 40s, 50s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s through modern state-of-the-art public labs, schools, public hospitals across the nation, nearly free college, trade school and research support, healthy small and family businesses all across our land, unions protecting a third of Americans so that two-thirds of us had decent wages and benefits, living wages and benefits, an interstate highway system, rail system, a network of new airports that transformed our nation's commerce. You know, and, and this is the point that I'm, I'm building to here, is that in 1981, when Ronald Reagan was sworn in, on January 20th, 1981, and as he put his hand on the Bible, the Iranians released the hostages that he had cut the deal with Iran to hold on to. But anyhow, in that moment, when he was sworn in, we handed over to Ronald Reagan we Americans handed our country over to him. We handed over a brand spanking new country. It was gleaming, it was glistening, it was sparkling. I mean, yeah, there were, there, there were a lot of problems, but I'm talking in terms of rebuilding this country from the Great Depression. But the seeds of today's crisis, of America's crisis, were planted 10 years earlier, back in 1971, when Lewis Powell wrote his infamous Powell Memo, which became the blueprint for the morbidly rich and big corporations to take over the collapsing Republican Party and then ultimately the entire United States. They moved on to infiltrate our universities, to seize our media, to pack our courts, to integrate themselves into large, uh, you know, the, the evangelical religious movement. And to turn upside down our tax, our labor, and our gun laws. And that effort was consolidated and burst onto the scene in a big way in 1980 with the election of Ronald Reagan. You know, by 82, we were all just amazed by the new ideas that the Republican Party had, like radical tax cuts, pollution deregulation, destroying unions, slashing the New Deal and the Great Society programs because Republicans said feeding, educating, or providing health care to people would, would just made them dependent. Their sales pitch worked. We are now 42 years into the Reagan revolution, and it's time to simply say out loud that it hasn't worked. Republicans told us that if we just cut the top tax rate on the morbidly rich from the 74% it was, it was at at 1980 down to 27%, it would trickle down benefits to everybody else because they said it would unleash the job creators on our economy. Instead, we've seen $50 trillion since 1981 transferred from the bottom 90% of us to the top 1% where it sits today. The middle class has gone from being over 60% of us to fewer than half of us. Republicans told us that if we just deregulated guns and let anybody buy and carry as many as they wanted, whenever they wanted, wherever they wanted, it would clean up our crime problem and put the fear of God into our politicians. Remember the bumper sticker from the 80s, if you're old enough, an armed society is, polite, is a polite society? They were all over the place, those bumper stickers. The NRA was relentlessly promoting the lie that the Second Amendment was put into place so that average Americans could overthrow a tyrannical government should that ever happen. It's a complete lie. But five Republicans on the U.S. Supreme Court got into the act by twisting the law and lying about history to make guns more widely available. And instead of a polite society or politicians who listened to us, we ended up with school shootings and a daily rate of gun carnage unmatched anywhere else in the developed world. 
Republicans told us that if we just ended sex education in our schools and outlawed abortion, we'd return to the good old days when they said every child was wanted and every marriage was happy. Instead of helping young Americans, though, we've ended up with epidemics of sexually transmitted diseases, unwanted pregnancies, and now that abortion is illegal in state after state, a return to deadly back alley abortions. Republicans told us that if we just killed off civics and history classes in our schools, we'd liberate our young people to focus instead on science and math. Instead, we've raised two generations of Americans who can't even name the three branches of government, much less understand the meaning of the Constitution's reference to the general welfare. Republicans told us if we cut state and federal aid to higher education, which in 1980 paid about 80% of all tuition, so that students, they said, we need to cut that. Cut that down to only 20% federal support and state support for, for colleges. So that students have skin in the game. And then they'll take their studies seriously, which will produce a generation of engineers and scientists to prepare us for the 21st century. Right. Instead of happy students, we did cut that 80% government support down to 20%. Now 80% of tuition is paid for by individual students and our nation is groaning under a $2 trillion student debt, preventing young people from buying homes, starting businesses, or even beginning families. Meanwhile, the banksters are making literally a billion dollars a week in profit on this, or billions of dollars a week in profits on these loans that you can't even renegotiate by law. Republicans told us if we just stopped enforcing the anti-monopoly and antitrust laws that have protected small businesses for nearly 100 years, there'd be an explosion of innovation and opportunity. Instead, what we get is competition is dead, giant monopolies, price gouging, profiteering, and you can't find small or family-owned businesses anymore, anywhere. They used to be all over our downtowns, our malls, our suburbs. No, they're all gone now. Republicans told us that if we just let a handful of individual companies and billionaires buy most of our media, a thousand flowers would grow, and we'd have the most diverse media man's landscape in the world. Now a small group of often right-wing companies own our major media and internet companies, radio and TV stations, as well as local newspapers across the country, and progressive voices, as you can imagine, have been generally marginalized. Republicans told us we should turn all our health care decisions take them away from our doctors and hand them off to bureaucratic insurance company middlemen who would decide which of our doctors' suggestions they'd approve and which they'd reject. They said this would lower costs and increase choice. In all of the developed world, all 34 OECD countries on four continents, there are only 500,000 medical bankruptcies every year and every single one of them is right here in the United States. Republicans told us if we just got rid of our unions, then the bosses and the companies who employ us would give us better pay, more benefits, real job security. As everybody can see, they lied, and as we're seeing with Starbucks and Amazon, they're doubling down on it. Republicans told us that if we just went with the trade agreement that the Bush and Reagan administrations had negotiated, NAFTA, and then signed off on the World Trade Organization, we'd see an explosion of jobs. Well, we saw an explosion, all right. 60,000 factories were blown up and leveled across the United States as all those jobs went off to China, over 10 million jobs. Republicans told us global warming was a hoax. In fact, they're still telling us that. So we shouldn't do anything to interfere with the profits of the fossil fuel industry, they said. The hoax, it turns out, was their lie. And now global warming is literally killing millions of people around the world every single day, including here in the United States. And of course, the biggest lie of all the Republicans told us, money is free speech. Five Republicans on the Supreme Court told us that. And threw out over a thousand anti-corruption and anti-bribery laws at both the state and federal level. Bottom line, as a nation, voluntarily or involuntarily, we have now had the full Republican experience. We now know what it is and we're no longer listening to the Republican politicians who continue to try to shovel this BS at us. We don't want Republicans sermonizing about the deficits they caused or the welfare that they damaged and exploited or even whatever the hell it is that they're calling faith these days, be it the death penalty, forcing raped women to give birth at the barrel of a gun or burning books. Republicans, we're over it. 
A new America is being birthed from the ashes of the Reagan revolution, and you can't stop it very much longer.